Good afternoon. Good evening. Good morning. <laughs> I've been starting that my, my videos a lot like that lately because I understand that people are tuning in from all around and at various different times during the year. I am Deborah Roth from Spirited Living and back this week with an interesting addition to our journey into the Divine Feminine by playing with, by embracing and acknowledging, identifying our inner goddess team for each of us individually, for, uh, for the world. And if you click on the eye, if you're on YouTube, if you click on the eye on this video, um, up in the upper right corner, if on Instagram, you have to go to my YouTube channel, you'll hear a little bit more about, about my journey into the Divine Feminine, why I am so committed to bringing those qualities, those gifts, back to our our very imbalanced world. So this week, I, I have to say, I, I can't even remember why I chose the Black Madonnas, and there are 500 of them. Something I read, there must be some sort of commemorative uh, celebration uh, for her somewhere around this time. But increasingly, I think, uh, as, as I've said many times, you can you can celebrate any of these divinely feminine figures uh, any time during the year to really uh, you know get in touch with your own inner goddess team and the archetype the archetypes that they represent. So, and and definitely, please, I would love boy when I dove into the Black Madonna, there were so many interesting things to read and so much interesting research. And as always, I seem to, to zero in on one particular uh, article or, or uh, blog that, that has so much information. This was one on, uh, let's see, it was called, um, like many of them are, frankly, um, it was called The Mystery of the Black Madonna by Martina Petkova. And Please, if you've got more information about her, if you've had an experience, I probably have seen a Black Madonna somewhere in my travels, um, but I have not been to Europe in decades, frankly. So I'd love to hear from people, just, you know, comments. Um, you know, I'd love to hear, you know, anyone who's had an experience with her. So she was, the, these images of the Black Madonna are, are hundreds of years old. They were, really um, painted and sculpted in the Middle Ages and medieval times. And there's all kinds of interesting um, theories about why, you know, what is the Black Madonna? Why is she black? It seems pretty obvious to me, but apparently not. The church, apparently, the Christian church still goes by the, um, by the party line that, that it's, it's um, centuries of of dust and and dirt and grime that's accumulated. Now, what's interesting is why does that just happen? I'm going to show you a couple images of her. Why does why does that just happen on her skin? Here's one that I love from the Black Madonna at Chartres, the the um, cathedral at Chartres in, in France, before they cleaned, before they restored the cathedral. Now she's very obviously black. You see anything else on her that's covered with grime? And they made her white and they bleached her because they just said they wanted to get rid of all that medieval um, gothic grime and dirt. And, and, and there was a huge uproar about it. So, and, and I think, I know, uh, if it were me, the, the reason for that is really because of this dichotomy and, you know, it, it takes the whole conversation about black and white into the religious spiritual realm. I mean, certainly we've seen that in the last several years with, with thank, thank goddess, with the awareness of Black Lives Matter and with understanding the, the um, systemic oppression and racism that exists around the world. And if you go back way into the, the spiritual history of that, what, what seems obvious is that there were all of these depictions of the Black Madonna because the story of Jesus and Mary took place in the Middle East where skin was darker. And in fact, there are many pre-Christian Judeo images of, 
of goddesses that we all know of Ceres, who was the, the Roman goddess of fertility of Isis from Egypt, um, Artemis of, uh, of um, uh, 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 I'm blanking out on the uh, a, a feast. <laughs> anyway, one of the Artemises <laughs> is is um, is also depicted uh, as black as dark. And what happened um, really by the 1400s, the everything uh, that the Madonna uh, Mother Mary had been Christianized to the point where everything was depicted and God was depicted, Jesus was depicted as white because it was thought that when you ascend to, every, to heaven, everything is light and white. And, and if, you, if you go the other direction, if you go abide with the devil, then that, that's the place of darkness and, and, and black. So this very clear dichotomy, and which of course spun out of that, is the whole um, placing the divine masculine, pa placing, the, placing the patriarchy over femininity, o over the divine feminine. So we see that through, you know, through all kinds of um, iconology. Now this, and there are wonderful legends around um, these, these images. So yes, we're talking about the inner goddess team here. The, the black Madonna, from my standpoint, is indeed a reflection of the, the earlier goddesses where women were where where gods and goddesses were equal um where where it was not a preeminent male god sitting somewhere in the sky presiding over everything else so i think that that she and and i apparently a lot of scholars agree too that she is simply a representation not so simply a representation of of the the true original mother mary of virgin mary this is an image of her from um, a church in Lu Lucera, I think was the name of it, in Italy. And apparently in 1944, um, I don't know whether he was a historian, I don't know what his history was, um, but it's, this is written about in a, in a wonderful book called The Cult of the Black Virgin. Um, and a guy by the name of Leonard Moss entered the church here and saw this black Madonna and asked the priest, why is this Madonna? Why is the Virgin Mary black? And, and the police responded, my son, she is black because she is black, <laughs> which seems like a pretty simplistic answer. And that's, that's what she looks like. And not so simplistic was how his discovery and his research about the Black Madonnas was, was, um, was received at a conference that he presented in 1952 when he, and this was, let's see, it was the conference of American Association for the Advancement of Science, and he he presented his findings about the Black Madonnas, and and every priest and nun walked out of of the talk of the auditorium. So there there's a lot of um, quite frankly racist, um, a lot of mixed response to uh, to these Black Madonnas, and they're beautiful. You can see they're they're um, they're iconic. So. And, and I wanted, I just, I wanted to share with you too, before I, um, I, I sing a little chant that I found that really reminded me of her, but some of the legends around her, some of the myths about her. Um, this is so of, 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 of her uh, paintings and her statues um, and how she is, has been a great protector and patroness in the various places in these, you know, 500 churches that she's found in. Um, so this was, so this one is from, um, let's see if I can get the pronunciation right. Uh, Chesta, Chesta Hauva, Chesta Hauva in Poland. And the, she actually had a couple incarnations before she ended up in Poland. She started out in Istanbul, was moved, the painting was moved to, um, Hungary. And in both places, she, there were battles that went on that 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 the the local people were trying you know the local environment um were were fighting off invaders and the one place that they were able to to save that was not demolished were were these churches where the the black madonna was one of the most um i think um astounding really uh well there's there's two that i'll share with you 
this same um, Black Madonna in Poland in one of the big disasters apparently of the um, of the Middle Ages was a landslide that happened in Poland where thousands of people died and whole towns were wiped out. And this one town, this um, Ch um, <laughs> Chester Hauwa monastery where she was, where she was housed, where she was, um, remained, oh, I'm sorry, I'm mixing up my stories. Um, the landslide happened in, in France and in a, in a, in a town, in a church in Mayens, M-Y-A-N-S. Sorry, this is the landslide story. Um, according to legend, this, um, the entire, so everything that I said before, the entire area was, was wiped out, obliterated, but her church stood, in fact, with boulders that literally came right up to the front door because uh, there were people praying and asking for her protection inside. That's, that's that legend. The other one, the one that I conflated, that I, <laughs> that I wove in together, was the one in, in uh, Czechoslovakia, where, um, I'm sorry, in Poland, where um, King Charles X was conquering Poland, invaded Poland, and army he's from Sweden. Sweden, kind of interesting. We think of that as being a peacekeeping company, country now. And the, this one town that, that um, had not been conquered um, held out for 40 days. And in the end, they ended up over, overrunning the Swedes and driving them out. So she became known, this beautiful black Madonna, became known as the, the um, Chester Halva, um, the Lady of Chester Halva, or the Queen of Poland. So really wonderful stories around her. And, and I think her message to us today is, to, is for us to look within ourselves, to look within yourself, and where are those areas that are deeply hidden? Where are the areas that you have cut off because they may seem deep and dark? The dark also represents the womb. It represents our unconscious. It, it represents the, the deep places within us. So it's an invitation. I feel like invoking um, the Black Madonna, any one of them, and please go online and find your own images of her. Uh, use that, use her, invoke her to be able to find the places within you, not to shine the light in, but to go deeper into the dark and to honor your intuition and your wisdom that resides there. So <laughs> my, my little chant that I'll share with you is one that is um, uh, from a, a wonderful CD uh, by Sherry, uh, Shelley McGrath, who I sang with many times at a wonderful women's spirituality conference um, that they haven't been able to hold for a couple years. And it just, it just spoke it just it's so evocative for me of, of going into that deep place and it goes like this we hear your cry deep in the night you're not alone we'll hold you tight deep in our hearts wrapped round your soul open your heart and you will know we hear your cry deep in the night you're not alone we'll hold you tight Deep in our hearts, wrapped round your soul, open your heart, and you will know. So please, take that in, open your heart to the deepest recesses of, of where your wisdom and, and your intuition lie and call on the Black Madonna when you want to embrace the dark places, the deep, wise places, the numinous places inside you. I will post the words for that chant and some of the, the links in the YouTube description. Thanks so much for joining me. Until the next time, bye-bye.